With these numbers going up and up and up, should more restrictions be brought back? To break down some of this, I'm joined now by infectious diseases expert Dr. Isaac Bogotch. Thanks so much for joining us and for the time this morning. My pleasure. Good morning. Good morning. Well, first off, you know, we see the numbers that are skyrocketing right across the country. And we know that really those numbers may not reflect the true amount of positive cases just because PCR tests are so backlogged. What how bad really could the peak of this be? What could we really expect? Yeah, I think, as you point out, there is limits. Uh, there's there's certainly limitations to the testing capacity. So that number of reported cases obviously is not reflective of what the true burden of infection is in the community. One of the other neat things to look at, if people are interested in this, uh, you alluded to it earlier, is the percentage of tests that are done that are end up being positive. So you mentioned in Quebec, it's around one in five tests. That's a lot. Like, that's a lot. So we certainly know that we're under uh, appreciating how much COVID there is. We've got to be careful here. These these cases can rise very high. And, you know, the silver lining is that this might be a less um, uh, deadly variant. Uh, said another way, this might be a more mild variant. But, of course, we still know that some people are going to get this and they're going to get sick and land in hospital. And when you have so many people infected, even a small percentage of that land in hospital ends up being a lot of people we've got to be very careful and help protect our health care system. Now, I was going to touch on that as well, just how severe this variant is compared to Delta. Some studies coming out this week uh, showing that it may be milder than expected. But as you pointed out, hospitalizations and deaths still can occur. Yeah, that's I think that's a, that's a great point. And uh, we all want it to be milder. That would be uh, absolutely the best news. Having said that, it's very, very transmissible. So if you have a small percentage of people that actually need hospitalization, uh, you know, when you have so many thousands and thousands and thousands of people infected, that small percentage still ends up being a lot of people that require health care. We don't want anyone to get this infection. And obviously, we have several tools to prevent infection and reduce infection in the community and, and at the individual level as well with vaccines, with masks, with better ventilation, with rapid tests. We've got a lot of tools we have at our disposal. Uh, but even with that, we are seeing a very high case counts. Those are expected to rise throughout the holiday season as more and more people gather together and there's just more opportunities for transmission. Uh, but again, we've got to be very careful to protect the integrity of our healthcare system because, you know, quite frankly, we're, we're pretty short staffed across the Across the country, there's been a lot of attrition from healthcare over the last uh, couple of years, and the, the hospitals are already stretched. And uh, you know, even if we see a, a, a bump in cases, it, it does put pressure on the healthcare system for sure. Now, this week, we've also seen the massive lineups for people uh, getting rapid tests that are being distributed throughout the province. A lot of these people will be using them for the first time this weekend, heading into gatherings. Any advice for someone who's using them? Is there um, a particular way to to swab in order to get a more accurate result, whether it's through the nostril or through the throat? There's been some talk about that as well. Right. I mean, I think the best thing people can do is really read the instruction guide and watch. There's um, a couple of helpful videos on the Internet that show the technique. It's not hard to do. You just have to do it right. The other important point here is, remember, the rapid test is really only as good as the time it's taken. Right. You can't do a rapid test and then, you know, the next day say, oh, I had a negative rapid test. I'm OK. And uh, and take that as your negative test. Like You should really be doing the rapid test in the shortest period of time between having a small gathering. And I think that's, that, that's the other take home point. So for example, if there's, I don't know, three or four people getting together for a dinner, if everyone tests negative on their way out the door to going to that dinner, that would be a, a, you know, a helpful added layer of protection. They're not perfect. They're really helpful, but they're not perfect. And we add that up with the other layers of protection like vaccination, better ventilation, you know, all the, the usual things we've been talking about for the last little while. I mean, these are significant added layers of protection and you can have a safer indoor gathering. OK, and your thoughts for uh, lastly on the, the booster rollout. We uh, saw pictures there at the International Center. A new mass vaccination clinic is set to open up. So things seem to be ramping up. But uh, we have heard the stories about people not being able to get appointments until February. Yeah, that's obviously disappointing uh, to say it politely. Uh, you know, we know that this third dose adds a lot of protection. You know, obviously three doses is imperfect. Two doses still offers very good protection against, uh, looks like it offers very good protection against getting uh, very sick. Three doses is better than two, but two doses still is helpful. 
I think we're seeing expanded capacity, though, and as more and more spots open up, I hope to see those February appointments hopefully move up to somewhere in late December or early January. Okay, and and again, are we, just lastly, are we close to the peak, do you think, or is this something that we're going to see explode throughout next next month? And your thoughts? You know what? I don't know. I really don't know. I, my guess, and again, it's just a guess. I'll obviously defer to the modeling uh, scientist on this one, but my guess would be we'd probably end up seeing a peak, you know, shortly after January 1st when the last of the household and yeah, other gatherings occur. And when we look elsewhere in the world, you see these rapid rises in cases, but it's actually followed pretty quickly by a rapid decline in cases. If we look at Omicron waves that are, appear to be in evolution elsewhere in the world, maybe we'll see that here in Canada. Hopefully we don't have to deal with this for too long. Hopefully see, we uh, see a rapid decline. My best guess would be that we'd see that decline you know, start sometime in early January, you know, after after New Year's. All right. Again, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Wishing you a very Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. And thank you for everything that you have done uh, throughout the last uh, 20 plus months. We really appreciate it. <laughs> That's very kind. Happy New Year. Have All a great right. holiday. Thank you. You too.